Okay, um, in this video I will show you how to get started with uh, Fountain Node for Emacs. Uh, this assumes you've already got Emacs installed. Um, if you don't, that'll be covered um, somewhere else. All right, okay, launch Emacs. Looks kind of ugly uh, first time you uh, launch it. Uh, if it's the first time you're actually using Emacs, you know, do the tutorial, read some of the manual, that kind of thing. So, I do not like this uh, menu bar. I don't like how a lot of this looks. So the first thing that I want to do is uh, make this look a little better. Let's turn off the toolbar. Um, let's turn off this uh, fringe. That's that was that thing. That was, and I don't, I don't think we need a scroll bar. There we go. All right, looks a little better. Uh, and the other thing is that this this the text is very squished. It's uh, really kind of more for programmers. Uh, so what I'll do is customize options matching line. Uh, I think it's line spacing. There we go. Uh, let's see, none. We we want some line spacing. So it says that additional space put between the uh, space measured in pixels. Let's try it with two pixels. Apply. Good enough. Three, mm. two is fine. Apply and save. There we go. Close that. All right. <clears throat> Looks a bit better. Now, uh, let's manage Emacs packages. All right. So the first thing you'll notice is, yeah, these are all GNU, 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 GNU. Uh, we want packages that are from outside of GNU, we want them from Melpa. So, uh, options, customize options, top level customization. Now package is under applications and package. It's a bit better. Package archive, show value. And we're going to insert an archive named Melpa stable. It can be anything, it doesn't need to be called Melba cell, uh, and the address is uh, stable.melpa.org packages, I think. And we can get rid of this because that's garbage. There we go. Let's see what happens. Now it's thinking, you can't see that it's thinking, but there we go. All right. Look at all these new lovely packages, and we'll do a search for fountain, fountain node. And here you can read about the features and everything, you've probably already read that, but uh, new from mountain, uh, and it's version 3.5.1, which is the latest version that I released just for making this video. Install that. And it's done. That's it's installed. Uh, all right. Let's open a fountain file. Uh, the, fir the, the 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 fountain file that everyone will probably know about is Big Fish. Uh, John August wrote that. And there we go. This is the first thing you'll see opening a script in fountain mode. It kind of looks, I mean, it looks like a script. That's that's for sure. Looks a bit ugly though. I just turn off all of the syntax highlighting. There we go. The other thing is, um, I'm not a big fan of how the text uh, just, you know, it's 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 far too wide going across this. So I don't like that. So, again, we will go to our package manager thingy and we'll look for another 
program that I've written for Emacs called Olivetti. And you see this is version 2. There we go, it's installed now. Olivetti mode. And there we go. I might even customize Olivetti. So, Olivetti style, this is a new option in version 2. Okay, we've got margins, fringes, fringes, and margins. The, and save that. There we go. See, this looks a lot more like a piece of paper, which is, which is good. Uh, but, maybe like typing in, uh, maybe like writing a script in what looks like code. Um, uh, maybe you want it to look a bit more like a script. So, let's customize the mode. This will get you into all the options for fountain mode. Now there's a lot of options. There's also more options in the subgroups. So we're actually looking for um, this fountain faces and fountain. This is the default base level face of fountain mode buffers. Show all attributes. It's got nothing like it's it, it's just uh, the default uh, font. Uh, now I've already got. If, if you've just got Curia, you can use Curia. I've already got Curia Prime uh, installed. So, there we go, Curia Prime. Uh, obviously, it's a bit smaller than our default font. So we go to height, let's scale that up a bit. There we go. Uh, now we're looking a lot more like a screenplay. Uh, yeah. Except you'll notice that the dialogue, it does reach a bit further over to the right-hand side than uh, a script looks like. That's, uh, that's just a limitation of Emacs. It can't, it can add uh, these indentations on the left, but it can't do that on the right-hand side. For demonstration purposes, I might use the, one of the other um, demo fountain files that uh, is on is on the fountain site. Uh, this one, last birthday card. Uh, okay, first thing, we didn't get all of Eddie, so let's customize the mode again, and we're looking for. This found mode hook. So I would probably, uh, I'd say to add, um, but we also want to do Olivetti mode. There we go. Now let's save that. Um, now let's say we open that again, the last birthday card. There we go. All right, so most of how to use fountain, I'm not gonna, uh, fountain mode, uh, I'm not gonna really go over a lot of it, but it's in the menu. So, now that you've installed fountain mode, uh, just to make it look a little better, let's have a look in, so this is your uh, Emacs directory, you probably know about this already. Um, uh, this is where fountain mode is installed. Now you'll see fountain theme. Now if you copy that into the Emacs directory, there we are there, close that. And then we say, custom themes, we'll get fountain, a theme for script writing. Probably want this, select more than one theme at a time. So let's 
Loading a thing can run, yeah, okay. And now treat this as safe, yes. Save theme settings. That will mean that will load every time. Which is fine because this is a very minimal uh, theme as you'll see. Now, I've already turned off all the syntax highlighting, so let's let's turn it on one at a time. Section headings. There we go. Um, scene headings. They're bold. Uh, something I also like. I uh, the synopses. There with little highlights on the synopses there, and notes. Now, does this script have notes? No, it doesn't. So, we should add some notes. Right? There we go. Uh, and there's the notes highlighted there. So, and then we can collapse the script, uh, navigate around. Hello attack. We just we just want to do this hello attack thing. So the one thing you might you, you might not like this that you see these underscores. So let's syntax highlighting. Let's turn the emphasis marker. There we go. Looks a bit more like a regular. Also the dots for the forced scene headings. Um, there we go. Uh, also you'll see here page zero of 20, it's 20 page script. It says page zero because this metadata is not part of the um, pages, pages of the script. Uh, that'll be the title page, which, yeah, is page zero. It doesn't count as page one. Uh, once we start moving into, there we go. Uh, there we go, that's page one. Also, you'll see that the notes are collapsed, so we can, that's tab. I was using tab there. Um, let me go down to, there we go, page 20 of 20. Alright, so yeah, obviously you want to write your own scripts, you don't want to just look at other people's. Uh, so the end of mm, all riddles. That'll do. So, First thing we want to do is insert metadata title. So it all it's it's gonna it's gonna give you a, a, a complete a guess completion of the based on the, the file name. So sure. Credit written by that's pretty standard and it'll try and use your um, your name, format, screenplay, that's optional. Source, well when making it up. Uh, but no. No, based on the novel um, Five Rivers by Joe Johnson. Date, uh, I don't tend to include the date, but whatever. And then you can add your file. Say me again. And my email, oops. and that'll do for now. So where should we start? Um, well, it's about rivers, so it's probably an exterior. And you, you will notice that we are now writing in uppercase. So I don't have the caps lock on or anything. It just um, based on this option, auto upcase scene headings. You can turn that on and off. On or, on or off, let's say we're at the Amazon River. And we can be day, we can be later, night, continuous, moments later. Let's say night. In a small uh, now Delilah. Okay, so we've typed a name, uh, but we want it to be a character. So let's make it all caps. You hit Control C C. Okay. Those stars sure are ugly. 
Delilah's not a fan of stars. So let's let's go back to our last birthday card uh, buffer. Uh, let's save it. Um, and let's run export command. So export, let's press tab, see what other we've got. After writing A4, after writing US letter, text play, there's a few of these that will come um, pre-configured, but uh, if you want to configure them yourself, let's customize now, export, export command profiles. So see, there's there's instructions on how to actually write these these command profiles. Um, they're fairly easy. It's just a shell command, and that's just the name. It's just a shortcut name for that shell command. I can run export command. After writing US letter, double space. Let's try that. Oh no! After writing not found. This is because Emacs. It is really aimed at Linux users. It's not, uh, they don't, they don't really know how other computers work. So, let's go to our package manager again. And, we're looking for exec path from shell and we'll install that, yes. Close that and then exec path from shell initialize. Okay, let's try that again. Run export command. There we go. Now, last birthday card. And there is your PDF script screenplay.